Etude number one is the rhythmic etude of the three regional etudes. All the way throughout, there's a constant motive of dotted eights and sixteenths all the way throughout. Be sure all the way throughout, you're really precise with them all the way through. Be helpful with the metronome to be sure that you're putting a dotted eight sixteenth beat and lining it up really good. Another good way to think about that is think of the words day, today, today, today. This rhythm gets butchered in music all the time, so you want to be really precise with it all the way throughout. In the third measure, there's a G natural for the first note of the 16th note run. The last note is going to be a G sharp. It's easy to think of as a G natural, so be sure you've got that right there. The seventh tuplet in the second line is kind of pops off the page and can be kind of scary. It's just a simple A major scale, and it starts on C sharp and ends on C sharp. Don't be worried too much about the timing of it, just be sure you start in the C sharp and you end on the high C sharp on the downbeat of the next measure. At the end of the second line, we have legerio written, which means light and graceful. So as you go through here, keep your tonguing really, really light. Be sure the staccato is not too much tongue, being tone over tongue. And at the end, last three measures, it's written rollantando e diminuendo al fine. That means slow down and get softer at the end. So you want to slowly slow it down all the way to the end. Make sure we stretch out the rhythm of the last measure to be sure we show the difference between the dotted eight sixteenths and the chord note, and then the dotted chord note eighth and the half. Etude number two is the lyrical etude of the three region band etudes. All the way throughout, we want to be sure that we're doing a lot with the musicality. And there's not a lot of direction in this piece. Outside of the, of the first line, where we have some dynamics and some crescendos and decrescendos, there's not really much written. So you want to be sure that you're always shaping it, always doing solo crescendos and, and day crescendos. Remember that music is always either going somewhere or coming from somewhere. Even though it is a slow etude, there's a lot of very fast rhythms all the way throughout. One thing that can be very helpful as you practice this is to take the eighth note for the beat. So at the beginning, it's written as quarter note equals 56. So if you think of it, if you double that tempo, you think of it at 112, the rhythms become a little bit easier to count. 16th notes become like eighth notes, 32nd notes become like 16th notes. It's much easier to count that way. At the end of the second, second line, we've got this long 32nd note run that can look very, very intimidating. It's an A-flat major scale. You just have to look and see what note it starts on and what direct, when it changes direction all the way throughout. The nine top at the end, think of it just as a slightly faster group of 32nd notes. So we have a group of eight, for the group of nine, you're pushing it just a little bit, and you want to be sure you're aiming for the C on the downbeat of the first measure of the third line. There's lots of pinky work throughout this entire etude. This one's in key of A flat major, which as we go up in sharps and flats, more pinky work gets involved. Be sure throughout you're always altering left pinkies and right pinkies. You never want to play two notes with the same pinky and have to slide. Finally, the last note of the piece is held for a long time. We're thinking the chord notes with three and a half counts. It's very easy to cut this off early. Be sure you're counting that note out all the way to the end, shaping it really well, and also get a tuner out and be sure that note is right in tune. Especially playing softly, it can go sharp really easily. Etude number three is the technical etude of the three region band etudes. This one moves with a really, really good clip. So it's really important to do slow practice on this. I would highly recommend starting this with the eighth note for the beat and take it really slow for a while to start. We'll be sure we're playing all the rhythms and the notes correctly, and we've got all the fingers in the right spots. You want to be sure all the way through this etude that your fingers are very, very relaxed. If your fingers tense up, it's going to be really hard to play all the fast runs that are all the way throughout this etude. There's a lot of dynamics in here that's easy to forget about because our fingers are moving so fast. Be sure you're paying really close attention to them and doing a lot with them and really exaggerating them, especially at the very end of the piece. When you take an audition on the fast etudes, you want to know what's the fastest I can play this etude cleanly. Slower and clean is going to beat fast and dirty any day. So know where your limits are. This is a very fast etude, and if you play it a little bit under tempo and play it clean, that's going to score you more points than trying to play it fast and dirty. Another thing that's easy to forget about with this etude is the articulation patterns. There's a lot of them all the way throughout. They're kind of bizarre in the 6-8 pattern. Look at them very closely. That's another good thing about playing slowly, is that not only you can catch the notes and rhythms, you can catch all the articulation patterns throughout too as well. You want to be sure all the way through here that you feel in control, that it's not frantic, 
and that all the way throughout here, you're still making the best tone possible on every note, even though it's really fast. Etude number four presents a lot of challenges. It's fast and it moves along with a good clip. There's lots of rhythms all the way throughout here that change. Lots of dynamic contrast, have, and sometimes very extreme dynamic contrast. And there's a lot of really nasty finger work all the way throughout here too as well. You want to start this one slow, just like we talked about with etude number three. You want to be sure you've got all the rhythms and the notes correct. And you want to double check them really carefully. There's a lot of spots in here where accidentals carry through the measure. And the, because there's a lot of notes in the measures, those measures can be long, can be easy to forget about. So go through this really carefully. Look through it before you even start to play it and be sure all those accidentals are marked in. Dynamically, there's a lot of big changes all the way throughout here. And a lot of them are very extreme dynamic changes that go from like the loudest we can play to almost the softest we can play. Be sure you bring those out and really do what they say on the page. There's some slides in the, in the third line that don't come up, these don't come up very often, where we have to play two picky notes on the same hand. The first one happens on the first measure of the third line. And this one we have from the E flat to the D flat. We need, we'll need to slide with our right pinky down here. This is because we have an A flat coming up in the next measure where we have to play on the left pinky. The other one comes in the last measure of the third line. And there are a couple of ways to do this one, but the way I like to do it is the first note of the last measure of the third line is an A flat. Then it goes down to a C. I would suggest sliding from the C to the B on the right hand, then playing the C on the next C on the left hand, and the next E flat on the right hand. They're really challenging patterns, so you really want to practice these very slowly and figure these out. If you don't figure these out, it's going to cause a lot of problems with your technique. Finally, there's a lot of articulations all the way throughout here, too, as well to watch out for. There's a motive all the way throughout here where we have an eighth note and a chord note. The eighth note has a staccato on it, the chord note has an accent on it. Repeats frequently throughout the piece. Be sure you bring that out so we hear that all the way throughout this. Just like we talked about with etude number three, it's better to take this a little bit under tempo and have it be clean than to take it at full tempo and have it be dirty. So as you work through this, keep that in mind. Be sure you're, it's always in control and never frantic. The Allstate audition ends with etude number five, which is the slow lyrical etude of the three etudes you have to play for the Allstate audition. Is also the last thing you will play at your audition. It's a kind of a different procedure with all state auditions versus regional auditions. There's two audition groups. And the first room you'll play your scales and your sight reading. And then you'll go to the etude room and play your three etudes. So this will be the last thing you, you play at your audition. And you want to leave a good impression with the last thing you play. It makes a big difference. All the way throughout here, we want to connect these dots as much as we can. Spark cantable at the beginning of the etude, which means song-like. So we want to make it almost sound like we're a really good opera singer. The tempo is half note equals 72. It would be very helpful in this piece to play it with the coordinate for the beat to kind of help get the rhythm at the beginning of, of your preparation. Once it starts to move a little bit, you want to switch it over to half note so it flows a little bit more. There's not a lot of dynamic direction all the way throughout here. So you want to be sure you're always, music is always going somewhere or coming from somewhere. So be sure it's never stagnant all the way throughout. We always also want to be sure we're always producing the best tone we possibly can all the way throughout here. There are some musical markings that look like sideways S's that show up in a couple times in the piece. The first one shows up on the first measure of the second line, and the other one shows up on the third measure of the third line. This is called a turn. And, it, and we want, basically, it is a ornament that we will do that follows the shape of the sideways S. So to demonstrate, the first one that starts on the first measure of the second line starts on a G. What you will do is you will quickly go up, up above the G, go down, go back, and come back up again. I will demonstrate for you to give you an idea of what it sounds like. So it's very helpful on this to go slowly to figure out what's going on. Just the one that happens in the third measure of the third line follows the same procedure. So when listening to the recordings of the etudes, listen to these parts very carefully to be sure you know what's going on. All the way at the end, there's some really big dynamic changes. It starts with 2-2 two, two and has forte cantabile, and then it goes down to piano echo. 
So we have one part where we want it to be loud, one we want it to be soft. And it's very challenging because the higher part is the softer part, not the lower part. So when you go up high, be sure you're producing a lot of air support. Don't bite with your armature and have your tongue up in your mouth with an E position to help with pitch and help with tone quality. Last two measures, it slows down at the end. Be sure you give a real gradual slowdown. Hold that last note, fade it out, and use a tuner to be sure that last note is in tune. So the very last impression you leave your judges with is an in-tune note.